make way for all the digital DM. World record holder, form most powerful BM. All the ladies love it when they see his live streams. Impressed by his knowledge of DMD 5E. He's got diaries, tutorials, he's a king among men. Put your hands together for the digital DM. Actually, his name is David. No. Shut up! Hey everybody, the Digital Dungeon Master here, and it is story time. I'm going to be doing these short stories from time to time, and these are stories that I've told to my patrons in my Dave's treasure chest. And this particular story I am calling Jennifer. And Jennifer was a girl that I started dating back in 1990, 1991. I was about 19, 20 years old. I didn't have a lot of experience with girls. In fact, I I was married to my job, basically, at, at a very early age because when I I got kicked out of the house at 15, got on a Greyhound bus and went to Daytona Beach and lived, and I learned the facts of life really quick. So when I worked my way up at Winn-Dixie Stores Incorporated, which is a grocery store, of course, I worked my way up to a meat department manager. And I had a chance to move back to the county that I moved from before I went to Daytona Beach. And I took that promotion, became, I went from hourly, from an hourly member of management to salary. I had one of the best stores in the whole Orlando district. It was awesome. Made a lot of money for a 20 year old. And I started dating this girl named Jennifer. And I had actually met her at the Merritt Island Mall. Actually, I met her in the food court. They had a, a Pizarro pizza, and I was getting a piece of pizza. She was behind me, and uh, I just said, hey, can I buy you dinner? I said, I hope you're not here with a, with a guy or anything. And I said, hey, can I just buy you dinner? She was with a couple of her friends, and it just kind of went from there, and we kind of dated on and off and hung out for about a year, year and a half or so. She's a pretty cool girl. I think she went into the military. I think she went into the, the army. And uh, when she left, I never heard from her again. So I hope she's all right and stuff. I hope, you know, that was a long time ago. But this Jennifer and I, we, we started dating. And like I said, I was very busy at work. I was working 10, 12 hour days. And she was going to meet me at my apartment. And we were going to watch a movie together. So I said, okay, that's cool. So we'll get back to Jennifer in a minute. The area that I lived in was an absolute mess. And it was called Little Vietnam. And it was called Little Vietnam for a reason. It was a huge crime rate area. Uh, I lived in an absolute shithole, which I didn't have to. I made really good money, but I was very frugal with my money because of the facts of life that I had learned at an early age. So that's why I was frugal and I lived in this one bedroom efficiency apartment. It had a small little kitchenette and a bathroom. But those were the only three three rooms in the house. I didn't even in the apartment. I didn't even have a bedroom. My bedroom and living room and everything was all one big area. But it was a shithole. And I had a neighbor. I had a really awesome neighbor. His name was James, and he was a dealer. He was like the man of the complex that, that I lived in. He was the man, seriously. Nobody messed with him. And uh, his nickname was Blockhead. <laughs> he was a great guy, though. He was a master cook. He cooked on the grill just about every day out in front of his apartment. And I would get so freaking hungry... Because the stuff that he was cooking on the grill was just amazing. And I actually went out there one day and I said, man, you, you are a hell of a cook. Whatever you're cooking smells awesome. And when I went out there to, uh, you know, talk to him, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, I run a meat department and I'm going to bring home some stuff. And if you don't mind, if I bring home a bunch of meat, when you go to cook dinner, will you just save me a plate? And he said, hell yeah, I'll do that. So I used to bring all kinds of stuff that was on sale, whether it be pork or ribs or beef or steaks or chicken or whatever. 
I would bring it to James and he would cook it. And then he would either have his kids bring me a plate over. And I'm, I'm talking, this was a massive plate. Or they would just invite me over and then I would eat with their family. And he had a, a, a girlfriend. I don't think they were married. And then he had a couple of uh, children with uh, beautiful children with this girl. And they, they actually lived a, a really nice life. But he was the only thing was he was he was a dealer. I mean he but nobody messed with him. And then therefore he started looking out for me. So nobody would mess with me in the complex. I was I was off limits. I was the normal guy. That that's what he called me. He goes, Dave, you you just a normal guy, man. You just a normal guy. But I really like James and he taught me a lot. He taught me a lot about life and he taught me how to cook on a grill. And he was a great guy. And the reason why I'm telling you this story is because I I saw James. I didn't even like call. He actually told me to call him Blockhead because that was his street name. That was his nickname. But I, I didn't like Blockhead. I mean, the dude had a big head. I mean, he had a big old head. And I, I said, no, I'm going to call you James. I said, I, I don't like the nickname. I don't like that nickname, Blockhead. And he goes, man, you just normal. I like you, David. <laughs> but... In this neighborhood, I was on the wrong side of the tracks for sure. But James looked out for me, and I and I really appreciate it. My car didn't get messed with, nothing. There were all kinds of cars I used to get broken into all the time, and I used to be in the car stereo stuff and all that stuff. It was uh, pretty expensive, but nobody messed with my car. And it was because of James, a.k.a. Blockhead. And I was so appreciative of that that I lived there for, for probably about I'd say about a little over a year. And uh, it was an experience, let me tell you. So now that you've been introduced to Jennifer, you've been introduced to the area that I lived in, and you've been introduced to my neighbor, James, we're going to continue the story. So Jennifer was going to meet me at my apartment. And I had just got done working a super long 20-hour day probably, it was the beginning of the month. I had to do my inventory where I literally had to count every single piece and package everything and turn in numbers to see how my profit would be. And that's how I made a lot of money from turning in good numbers. I'd get bonuses. And I was in a, a beautiful store, middle class area, you know, nice profit. It, it was awesome. So I just got done working this long day and Jennifer was coming over in a couple hours to watch a movie. And I can't remember for the life of me what movie we were going to watch. I have no freaking clue. But I was going to try to stay up and I failed. I'd, I'd said, oh, you know how you, you've, everybody's done it. I'm just going just gonna to go ahead and rest my eyes for a couple of minutes and get a little, little quick nap in. Well, I was... I was out. I was sawing logs, probably. Now, all of a sudden, I awaken to this banging on my door like somebody was trying to break into my, my pad. And I was, I was worried. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And then all of a sudden, I hear James, my neighbor, yelling at the top of his voice in total street tongue, going, Dave, get out here. Did I almost just killed your bitch. Get, and I'm going, what the hell, my bitch? What the hell? I had no clue. And he goes, Dave, you better keep your bitch in check. Dave, wake up. Wake. And he's banging on my door, and I open the door, and I'm like still sleeping. And I'm like, James, what the hell is going on here? And he says, I just, and he's waving a goddamn pistol around. He's got a bat in his hand, and, and he's yelling, Dave, I just about killed your bitch. I just about killed her. I just about shot her. I just about killed her. I, I don't know what the hell happened. All I know is I turned on my light, and, and this bitch was jumping out of my bathroom window. Well, Jennifer was worried that I did not answer the door. So she went around to the back of the building and she thought that she was going to be slick and, you know, climb into my bathroom window. Well, she chose the wrong goddamn window. <laughs> she, she climbed into James's apartment. And James heard this shit going on. 
And then all of a sudden, he heard this banging and crashing and stuff. And he goes, and he's still waving that gun around everywhere. That pistol revolver, it was a, a silver nickel uh, revolver. And he was waving around saying, Dave, I just shot a, a Dave, I, I thought it was one of the crackheads coming to try to steal my shit, man. <laughs> it was so funny. Now that I look back at it, it's funny as hell. But at the time, I was like, holy shit, this is absolutely crazy. I didn't sign up for this. So when she, when Je- when Jennifer climbed in to the bathroom, she fell, she slipped, she got tangled up in the shower curtain, and she banged her head on the water spout, the handles, and she broke her head open in a couple places. And she was floundering around trying to get up. Well, James heard this, and he went barging into the bathroom and and he says dave as soon as i turned that motherfucking light on that bitch jumped up like a cat and sprung out the window and she cut herself and oh my god it was it was a mess but she he, james pointed over to her and she was sitting down on on the curb on one of the the parking uh stumps there and she was wrapped up in this fucking shower curtain she was bleeding all over the place she was she definitely got concussed i because she was just out of it <laughs> and he almost fucking shot her oh my gosh man what a mess i had to take her to the emergency room and this is back in the day when they wouldn't let you into the emergency room with the person that you bring unless you were like a family member and so i had to wait for her to page me because this is back when you know cell phones were as big as a fucking briefcase but i had a pager so she paged me when she was ready. And of course, I got home and I fell asleep again and I didn't hear the page go off. But about 11 o'clock at night, midnight, she was banging on my door right out of the hospital, head wrapped up as big as a damn basketball with all this, all these bandages and gauzes and shit. And she still wanted to watch that movie. I said, man, you are, I said, you are a trooper to just get the shit beat out of you like that from falling in a, in a bathtub. And I said, you still want to watch that movie? She says, yeah, I, I do. And then she says, Oh, I'm so sorry about all this. I said, you, I said, you almost got killed. And she says, Oh, I know. I, I saw him come in there with a gun and a bat. And I didn't know what else to do, but to, to fucking jump out. She literally, he's James says, she jumped like a motherfucking cat. <laughs> like a cat out the window. It was so funny, man. Oh, what a crazy story. But we dated for, for probably about a year or so. And it wasn't even anything serious. I mean, it, we, you know. But it was uh, good times. So that's one, of, uh, that's one of the train wreck stories of my life. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time. Something